to the orthopedic tutor channel today we'll be discussing about shoulder impingement well first off you need to know that this is a continuum of disease starting from the impingement which may occur at the subcoracoid impingement or the subacromial impingement which will then subsequently develop into a calcific tendonitis condition or a subsequent rotator cuff tear and it will finally end with rotator cuff arthropathy well today's channel today sorry today's video will focus about the subcoracoid impingement so we're going to start from here from the basically you could see that the subcoracoid impingement is an impingement or in other words the narrowing of the space beneath the coracoid in this picture here we could see that this is the coracoid process and this is the anterior humerus and this is the subscapularis tendon that crosses through it and the impingement is also it is actually caused by the process of the coracoid which presses on the subscapularis tendon so basically it all starts from the epidemiology there are certain risk factors that may cause this condition such as the long or lateral coracoid process there could also be a prior surgery causing the posterior capsular tightness therefore moving the whole head of the humerus forward and impinging on the subscapula there could also be associated conditions for this subcoracoid impingement which include supraspinatus tear infraspinatus tear, tear also subscap tear now the definition of subscapularis impingement is impingement between the coracoid and the lesser tuberosity itself such as the one depicted before well for the patho, patho anatomy itself the that position the position in which the subscapularis is usually at the maximum impingement position is if our whole upper limb is positioned in an adduction flexion and internally rotated position now the diagnosis for this condition is fairly straightforward you need to know first from history taking the patient may complain of shoulder pain which is usually worsened in position of flexion adduction and rotation and the tenderness is also usually located over at the anterior coracoid with the maximum pain position of around 120 degrees of arm flexion along with rotation remember that all of these have a relation to the position of maximal impingement so if the condition itself is caused by narrowing then if you narrow the actual space by doing adduction flexion and internal rotation then definitely you are going to induce pain now for the additional examination there could be several methods that could be done which include plane radiograph where you are actually measuring the distance between the coracoid and also the humerus and you could also do CT scans which is done with the arms crossed on the chest and you need to measure this distance the distance between the coracoid process and the anterior aspect of the lesser tuberosity and this space is measured now normally it should be more than 6.7 in flex arm position and more than 8.7 in adducted arm position now if it goes below 6 then it is definitely an impingement condition now for MRI you could seek to find some rotator cuff pathology that is usually associated with it but certainly for the findings for this specific condition include the increased signal of the muscle that is being impinged also you could look for any increase in signal for the from the lesser tuberosity you can see here this is the lesser tuberosity this is the coracoid and you can see this is the subscap and you could see that there is increased signal over at the lesser tuberosity there could also be increased signal in along these tendons which is the subscapularis muscle 
Now, after knowing that this is the condition that your patient has, then you are moving on to the management plan. Now, for the management plan, it always includes non-operative and operative techniques. The non-operative techniques is definitely the first line of treatment for this condition. Modalities may include rest, ice activity modifications, NSAIDs, physical therapy, or corticosteroid injections. Now, for the operative technique itself, it is also usually indicated only in refractory cases where the symptoms remain evident and the subscap tearing is due to impingement. Now, techniques vary, but usually you need to do a sort of plasty. Plasty means reconstructing. You need to reconstruct the coracoid somehow so that it does not cause any further impingement in the future. And it may be done also along with subscapularis repair if there is total repair of the subscapularis muscle but sometimes you need to do an open surgery instead of arthroscopy and you could do an open coracoplasty to resect the lateral part of the coracoid process and then you need to reattach the conjoint tendon don't forget that Along the lateral part of the coracoid, you have a conjoint tendon there. You need to reattach those tendons back to the remaining coracoid process that is still there. Well, that is all for today's video, which is the subcoracoid impingement. Be sure to log in to the next video included in the channel. Please just subscribe to the Orthopedic Tutor channel for more videos. Thank you.